The new Power BI card formatting is one of the biggest updates we've had in years, and it finally lets you build truly modern KPI cards. In this free four-part mini course, I'm going to show you exactly how to use the new card, starting with the basics and working our way all the way up to advanced design. Let's jump in. This is part one of our series where we'll cover the new card basics. In video two, we'll move into intermediate techniques. Video three, we'll focus on advanced card formatting. And then in the final video, we'll build this entire card from scratch together, step by step. By the end of the series, you'll know how to design clean, modern KPI cards that genuinely impress your clients and stakeholders. If we look at this card right here, we can see that we've dragged one measure into it. So this is just simply our net profit measure. Now, when you drag a measure into the card, everything within this measure is called callout. So this value that we see, this label that we see, this is part of the callout, the images as well. So let's go to format your visual callout. And when we have it set to all, you'll notice that you have a layout. And this is where you can adjust the layout of your callout. We can make it go vertical to the top, middle, and bottom. You can also adjust the padding. And if we switch it to the actual card, this is where you can fine tune the formatting of the individual components of your callout. So we have our value right there. If we open it up, we can adjust everything, including how you want to display the units and your decimal. We have a label that you could turn on or off as well as position that label to the top or the bottom. I typically have my horizontal gap between my label and my value at a pretty low amount. So right now you can see I have it at a three pixel. We also have an image. Now you'll notice that there's a lot of different settings in the card. We have a lot of different places where we can place images, for example. But the key here is understanding where that subcategory lives. So right now I can see this image is within the callout section. So I know that this is part of the callout. Now one change they have made is to the image within your callout. If we scroll down here, we can see a setting called image area size. Right now I have it at 20%, but look what happens when I go to 50% or 10%. So that is something you would want to adjust to make sure that your image is the size you'd like it to be. Now I typically set my image size to fit and you can also adjust the vertical alignment of that callout image and you can put it to the left, you can put it above, you can put it below and you can put it to the right. I typically like my callout images to the right of my cards with a top vertical alignment. You can even set a horizontal gap if you'd like, which would be the gap between your callout value and label and the image. And the last callout setting here is background. So you can set a background color if you'd like to do that. And if we look at this card, we can see that I have rounded corners and a little background shadow. If you did want to format your card similar to this, all you need to do is select the card and go to format your visual general effects, visual border on, with a 25 pixel rounded corner. And then I put a shadow with this light color gray with an outside offset and a bottom right position. So again, this is our basic card. But to summarize, you simply need to drag in your measure and then you would make your adjustments within the callout section. Simple as that. Now let's take this a step further. We can drag in two measures within this card visual. So as we can see here, I dragged in a secondary measure called gross sales. So now we have two cards within this one card visual. And we can see we have a callout section within each of these two cards. So if we go to visual settings, now we can take a look at this multi-card layout section. Right now you can see that we have it set for tiles, horizontal, two columns. It's going horizontally with our first measure, which is gross sales starting and then net profit to the right of it. If we changed it to vertical, then we can see that it would adjust. And now we have the cards going vertically. 
Now, auto grid, I always suggest leaving on pretty good safety feature. If you do turn it off, you do have more flexibility. So let's say I turn it off and put rows for three. Notice how it created that third row. But obviously we don't want that third row, right? Because we only have two cards. So when you have it on, it's automatically going to adjust for you based off of how many cards you have in the card visual. So we'll switch that back to horizontal. Now within this multi-card layout category, we have additional categories that we can play with here. So for example, we can set the padding for all cards within. So if I change that to 20, notice how we have more spacing on the left for both cards right there. We can also set a horizontal gap, which would be the gap between these two cards. So if I up that to 20, notice how the middle spread out a little bit there. You can place a border if you want, and you could even place a background all in one shot to all of your cards within there. One thing you can also do here is add an image to the background. We'll make the transparency 100%. So we don't want a background color, but we wanted to upload an image. You can simply upload an image background and it uploads it right to the card visual. Now from here, there's a ton of different things you can do with this image now. If we turn on image effects, you can increase or even decrease the exposure and go negative 50. Notice how it darkens it. We can adjust the contrast if your image is looking a little dull. You can increase the saturation to bring out those colors a little more if you'd like. And you can even blur it a little bit. So let's say I want to blur this to 90%. And maybe I want the transparency at, well, we'll go 90. So what we did there is just created this very subtle background image that doesn't take away from the values within the cards. So it's pretty cool. We have these additional image related effects that we can adjust and play around with now. Now, again, I typically set my image size to fit. So I like fit because it'll fit appropriately within your window with the correct ratio of the image itself. Now, in this example, we can see we still have only two cards we have gross sales and net profit but we've added a background color and an accent so if we go to our card section and open it up we can see that for all of the cards we've changed the shape to a rounded rectangle with a 15 pixel corner radius see when we adjust it what that does go back to 15 and you can see also that we've added this background so it's just simply the color black with a 99 percent transparency Notice how we also have accent bar on, and each of these cards has a different accent bar color. So if I go up here to apply settings to and change it to gross sales, then go down and go to accent bar, you can see we have that specific color at a width of 10 pixels, 50% transparency. You can change it to the bottom, change it to the right, change it to the left. We'll go back to the top. And again, we can do the same for net profit and just change that individual color. You can even apply conditional formatting to the color. So it can have it change based on the value. For example, that's within your all out. Let's talk about padding real quick because there's a lot of different places where you can set your padding. So it's important to understand what each section is related to. So for example here, we have two cards. So if we open up multi-card layout and then we open up padding, Notice how I have a 20 pixel padding around. I change this to 10 on the left hand side. Notice what happens. Everything within the card stays the same. We're simply adjusting the padding of the card itself within the card visual. So this multi card layout padding works the same as the properties padding here. Notice how I have everything zeroed out. If I add more padding here, it's going to add this padding on top of the padding that we just applied to the multi-card. If I put 20, notice how it pushes it in even further. So definitely be aware of that. Now, if we go down to our card section now, right now we can see we're on gross sales and we open up padding. Let's see what happens when we adjust that. Notice how this is only affecting everything that's inside of the card itself. It's not affecting the outside. It's affecting everything inside. Now, the third type of padding I want to talk about right now is within your callout. So this would be only 
the part of your card that is considered callout. It's going to be the value label and then this callout image. So if we open up callout and go to padding, this is now where we can adjust the padding for only the callout if we'd like. If I put 20 here, notice how it's going to push everything down because everything in here is related to callout. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to support the channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that notification button. If you'd like to dive deeper into Power BI UX UI design, feel free to check out my course links in the channel description. Next, go ahead and check out part two of this free four-part Power BI card mini course. In part two, we'll dive into additional card features such as reference labels and categories.